of 2021. We know it's been a difficult year, but we appreciate the efforts of our members in terms of savings, borrowing, and repayment of their loans. So I'd like to encourage that we continue with this work. It is a, a wonderful movement we are in, and it is great when we see growth of members in our circles. Uh, as Cusco, we are always honored, and we've been honored for the partnership that we have had with GDC over the years. We continue to partner in our education and training, our research and consultancy, our investment arms, and many, many other ways in which we have partnered with Gedungori, uh, with GDC Sako. So thank you very much for that partnership. And we hope to look for a better year, uh, 2022, in terms of growth of uh, our Sako. We'd also like to invite the Sako to continue assisting us in our advocacy arm Whatever issues you may have in terms of uh, operation-wise, in terms of legislation, Cusco is here to advocate on your behalf. So, Bona Chair, feel free. Anything that you may need us to assist you in terms of advocacy, Cusco Limited is here for you. The, the, the business for the financial year 2020, 2021, yes, there is those challenges we faced, but we overcome all of them and we are able to manage to, to have a positive surplus, which we are going to, to give out as a payout of dividend or of a total sums, one, a total Kenya savings, one that one million, which is going to be a dividend, which we, which we are going to give out to our members. With the support of our members, we are able to manage, then through the members' training, also, that was uh, something which we took it very seriously. We trained our members so that they can be able to look for the other alternative to do the farming and their business. So we managed. All the, all the P KPI, the parameters, we, we really performed very well. From membership, loan to members, uh, total asset, total gross turnover, we really achieved all the targets. Based on members' deposit, last year was 5%. five this year we are going to give out with 6% in members' deposit. In the last financial year, the payout of the members' dividend was 10%. We are going to give out this year with 12%. So there is that growth, yes. We really see the support through the, the SASRA and the, and the local government in the support to do with the governance. But when it comes to the giving back to the, the same community or the circle, it is not well felt or well stipulated that the way we can see that that savings go coming back to the to the same member or the same farmer. So there is that gap in the government entities. This report, the, the board of directors report. One of the major challenges is the cyber crime. We really invest in the, that infrastructure to, to, to manage that cyber, cyber crime. So it is, it is really one of the items which really consume to the, to the circle uh, income. Has grew from, from 2.8 billion, now currently by the by the year 2021, 31st December, it stood at 3.5 billion. Yes. We try to oppose, you know, what the, 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 the um, Sasra does to classify rural circles and urban circles when charging the levy. Because rural circles depend on agriculture or, you know, what you call farming. And uh, sometimes the seasons are not, uh, nobody is sure about what will happen. There are diseases, you know, that uh, come to the cows or animals. Then that is where the, the farmer derives his income from. So when the animal dies, we cannot collect the debt. So we, we struggle and we have quite a number. 
And this is why when you when you're reading the, the, the financial statement, those people who have who have uh, you know devoted as it's a big figure involved. I don't know over five hundred million. So that that is now denying the investor a higher dividend. My suggestion is they should uh, you know treat rural circles and urban circles separately. When charging the levy, in fact they should charge very much less on rural circles. All of this good, you know, from the financial statement, and uh, as it was read, you know, by the external auditor, uh, it is impressive, you know, considering the year 2021 was a difficult year. Uh, we had uh, what you call COVID. COVID affected uh, most of the uh, financial institutions, or basically the, 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 the businesses. So as a result of that, uh, the income did not, you know, much with what we expected. All the same, we struggled and uh, we were able to manage, you know, quite a, a, some growth, I must say. The year was a very difficult year for COVID-19. We were in a long time, we were in the same place, we were in a foot and mouth disease. But uh, again, I saw that we were able to do that. We were able to do that because we were able to do that because we were able to do that kama si ya mambo mawili lakini kibiashara tunaweza kusema effect yake haikuwa haiku, haiku tuguza sana katika faida kwa wanachama e, jambo ambalo tuliweza kuwa tunaiangalia sana e, watu wengi mwanzo mwanzo walikuwa naogopa kukopa na wakawa wanaegeza pesa mingi zaidi kwa hivyo tuliweza kuwa na more deposits than the usual trend lakini baadaye wakati when it became the new normal members walianza kukopa tena na biashara ikawa inaendelea vizuri. Ah uh, hiyo inaweza dhirika na hesabu ya leo. Nilipofanya hesabu ya mwaka mzima unaweza kuona kwamba biashara ya kupeatiana maloni ilipanda kwa kiasi kubwa sana. Sababu iliweza kupanda kutoka 2.3 million billions loans to members mpaka 3 billion. Hiyo ni ukuaji mkubwa sana wa zaidi ya 800 million. Kwa hivyo ni kuonyesha despite covid watu waliweza kuad just na wakaichukua kama new normal na maisha ikaendelea. Naweza kusema kukuja kwa sasra imesaidia sana mambo ya governance sana. Pia imesaidia sana mambo ya vitu tunaita prudential ratios technically. Hizi ni ratios zinaangalia mambo ya assets kulinganisha na utajiri wa chama, mikopo kulinganisha na vile zinalipwa. Na nafikiri kwangu mimi as a technical person naona kukuja kwa sasra na mikakati ambayo imeweka imesaidia sana hizi vyama vya ushirika kwa sababu imeweka mikakati kuna kiwango ambacho lazima ufike ndio uweze kupeana mazao kwa wakulima na hiyo tumefikia yote na unafikiri unamemona leo tunapeana dividend kwa kiwango ya 12% na hiyo ni kiwango kizuri kwa wanachama wetu na nafikiri watafurahia sana tuko na wanachama wengi zaidi ya 49000 lakini tuko na paid up members ambao ni kama 26000 kwa hivyo impact yetu inasikika sana katika sehemu za Gilongori. Tuliweza kupanuka physically kwa sababu mwaka uliopita tuliweza kuenda sehemu za Ruiru. Lakini mwaka huu tunatarajia kutumia mitambo sana. E, mitambo technology tunataka tarajia kufungua agents nyingi sana sehemu za Thika, sehemu za Wagige, Kikuyu, sehemu za Maimayu, Karagita, Suswa. Hizo ni sehemu ambazo tunataka kufika. Lakini mambo ya kufungua branch a, mwaka huu hatujapangia lakini tuko na mpango wa kufungua market office katika moja ya hizo sehemu nimetaja. Ungekuja kuona sheria ya cooperatives inaitwa the Sako Act na pia kuna cooperative act. Utakuja kuona hizo sheria zote mara nyingi zimetengenezwa kuzuia mkulima ama kuzuia mwanachama. Interest capping hata ilipotolewa hata ilipowekwa pia. Cooperatives hatukugizika sana from a technical point of view because uh, cooperatives are member owned. So being member hon eh uh, huwa tuna wale wanachama ambao tunazidi kuhudumia. Kwa mfano kama GDC ya Magedhunguri faida yetu ikipanda huwa tunateremsha interest rate kwa wanachama wetu. Ndio tuweze kuwakope zaidi na wafanye mambo mengi zaidi. Fight it being a election year the physical reports ambazo zinatolewa na Central Bank Tuesdays zinaonyesha more people are still investing and more banks are still making more money than years before. Whereas tunatarajia huwa kuna kuna miezi miwili mitatu kabla ya election kufanyika watu ni kama huwa wana slow down 
where we still feel tuta resilience ile tuko nayo itatuwezesha mwaka huu pia kufanya zaidi zaidi hata katika strategic plan tuko na matarajio ya kukua tier 1 sako tuwe na 5 billion and above by next year next year 2023 kabla ifike katikati